Hey everybody, what's up? It's Jared here, and today we're going to be talking about these monitors back there. Now, a couple of years ago, I saw an ad on Craigslist, a guy was se selling um, three Apple cinema displays, 23-inch versions of uh, the older cinema displays, not the newest model. He was selling them for a really good price, and at the time, I was looking for a triple monitor setup. I was trying to escape my four separate monitors that were all different brands and different sizes and everything uh, to get three monitors that were all the same brand, same size, same screen, so that I could have a consistent uh, view across my computer. So I saw how good of a deal these were, and I decided to jump on them. So I went to see the guy, and he said that the only thing they were missing was a power supply. Now, me, I was looking at it as a, not a big deal because I didn't think power supplies were going to be that much, so I bought the monitors for 135 bucks for all three of them, which you know you can't even buy one monitor for that price. So I picked up these monitors, and then I went to buy a power supply for them, and I realized Apple wants to charge $100 for a power, power supply for these monitors. What? I bit the bullet and I bought one of the power supplies that cost me like $88 to buy a power supply for this monitor. Plugged it in, monitor worked great. Instagrammed a few pictures from it, edited a video, um, and then my room flooded and I had to move my computer across to the other side of the room. Plugged everything back in, monitor wasn't working. Come to find out that only a month after I had bought the power supply, it died. Seriously? So. I shelved the monitors and said I'm not going to invest any more money into these monitors because they're going to be so ridiculously expensive and die constantly. So I ended up buying a few different monitors from ViewSonic, um, 21 inch monitors and they became my primary monitors and I pulled those the old Apple monitors down from the shelves a couple times just to see if I could get them to work. And uh, they worked a few times, I actually had one set up uh, over there using the broken power supply and it worked on and off and then eventually it just stopped working completely so I took it down. Now eventually my room started getting so crowded with stuff that I decided if I'm not going to use these monitors then I need to throw them out. I didn't want to throw them out because I spent good money on them so I started looking for solutions to get them working again. What I eventually stumbled on was an alternative to the Apple brand power supplies with a generic brand power supply that they use to power LEDs. You can find them all over eBay and online and I bought one of these for under $15 I think and that's what I use. So basically what you need to do is you need to cut off the end of your Apple monitor, uh, cut off the power tip, and then you need to strip that wire, and that wire is going to reveal a whole bunch of frayed stuff and a metal casing. You need to peel that back and you're going to be faced with two other wires, and you need to peel those off as well. Now you need to plug those in like you see here, and screw them down. Alright, so now you need to pick out a standard power cable. These are all over the place. You usually get them when you have, whenever you buy a monitor or computer or motherboard or whatever. Um, I usually have six of them laying around my house. I've always got one to spare. Um, cut the end off of that, strip it, strip the three wires inside, and then hook them up like you see here. Alright, now, before you turn it on, this is important. You know there's two monitors back there as you can see. Um, like I said, I bought three of these monitors so I could have a triple monitor set up. So now you're wondering, why isn't there a third one there? What happened is there is a switch on the power supply between 240, 220 volt and 110 volt. It comes default at the 220 volt. And if you turn it on with, when it's at 220 volt, it will fry the monitor. When I got my power supply, I saw the label on it. It said 220 volt and it said there was a switch, but I couldn't see the switch. So I just ignored it and ended up frying the monitor and it's no good now. Um, so eventually I found the switch and what you need to do is you need to unscrew the top casing as you see here and then the switch is inside you need to make sure that's flipped to 110 before you turn it on. So after that all you got to do is screw everything back together, make sure everything's tightened down, close down the little yellow lid and then plug it in. And it was as simple as that. I got it working and now I've got a very good monitor sitting there behind me. Don't know what I'm going to use it for yet though second one I got working from a little bit of a different perspective. I only had one of those power supplies, but the second one I got working because my dad said that he had a power supply that my mom used to use to hold a whole bunch of Christmas lights. Now they don't use the Christmas lights anymore, hence they don't use those power supplies anymore. So we looked at the power supply, read the label, and it has the right specs in order to power our monitor. So we stripped it just like we did the other ones, and then 
directly soldered those the power cable from that one into the power cable from our Apple monitor. We wrapped it up in some electrical tape and boom, it works fine. So yeah, that's about it. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an overview of how to um, get this thing working. Um, they're very good monitors for the price if you can get them broken like I did. They're definitely not monitors now that I look back. I would not want these as my primary monitors because they are a plasma display and they have terrible, terrible burn-in. But the resolution is great and the size is great. I think it's like a really great size for um, small workstations or dual peak screen builds like that. Um, really great monitors for a great price, being able to fix them for so cheap and everything. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a tutorial because um, I noticed there wasn't really a really nice high quality tutorial on how to do this. So, um, images of how everything needs to be wired up is going to be linked down below and I did not come up with this solution. Um, I found it online and the link where I found that is going to be down below. Alright guys, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed, hope you got something from this and I'll see you in the next one.